In order to give you some technical background about steganography, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about hiding messages in RGB images. RGB images have three channels. Um, one is red, one is green, and one is blue. These channels each have a value from 1 to 255. And by mixing the red, green, and blue values is how you get all the different colors. This is very different than what are known as index images, such as GIF and PNG. While they do support steganography, it's a totally different method than we're going to be talking about right now. So the first thing we need to do is discard some of the image data so we have room for the hidden message. In almost all cases, the least significant bit of any pixel can be discarded without affecting the visual perception of the image. So there's this theory known as just noticeable difference that says small changes will not be noticed. In fact, the least significant bit of images or of, of each pixel data in an image is only one half percent of the actual pixels definition. So for some images you can discard even more than a single bit without a noticeable difference. Images that lend themselves to losing more than one bit tend to have solid shapes that are at least a mid-level brightness. Once the data is discarded there's room for the hidden message data. Since the least most significant bit doesn't perceptually alter the image, that bit can either be set or not set without notice. The least significant bit can be used to store the hidden message. The image into which the message is hidden is known as the carrier. Now, you can take the hidden text or whatever data and split it up into bits and store those bits in the least significant bit of the carrier. Let's take a look at the letter A. It is in binary 01000001. So that first low order bit in the carrier will be 0, the next will be 1, the next will be 0, and so forth until the entire letter is hidden. Okay, so let's take a look at a small sailboat picture. And here you can see I've got the RGB data for the first three pixels. Um, R1, G1, B1, R2, G2, B2, R3, G3. And notice that I don't need B3. We'll use that for the next letter. But um, the letters only need eight bits, so I just stop there. Okay, so now take a look. I've got the binary representation of those values. And at the very bottom is the least significant bit. What we need to do is delete all the values in that row. Now, we don't actually delete them, but we just set them all to zero. As you can see here, those values are all set to zero, and there's no perceptible change in the sailboat image. Finally, we take our letter A and put it into those bits, 0100001, and here again, no perceptible change. Thus, we have hidden the letter A in those first eight bytes of carrier data, and nobody is the wiser. Hey, guys. Uh, today I'm talking to you about uh, steganography, um, the methods of it, and uh, the process on how it's used. Um, steganography is considered to be a science of uh, hiding information. Uh, the goal of, of steganography is to hide data from a third party. Um, very similar to cryptography, um, the only difference being that Cryptography is gen generally applied so that the data is just unreadable by the, the third party, not not just hidden. Um, over the past 30 years, uh, steganography has drastically increased in popularity um, due to the, to the introduction of personal computers. 
um, you can implant steganography into data physically, digitally, through networking, printed text, um, on actual hard copies, um, and puzzles. Uh, some examples would be using uh, invisible ink. You see it, you know, in spy movies. Um, also, covert channels, hidden text within web pages, hidden files. Uh, even in plain sight, like uh, just putting a file in your System32 directory, um, and also null ciphers. Uh, a null cipher that's been popular for years um, is where you use the first letter in each word to form a hidden message within a normal letter. Uh, You've seen it in prison movies. The, they'll send just a normal letter to somebody in prison, but really it it means something totally different. Um, also, steganography has gotten more advanced over the years. Um, people have become more skilled in the field of um, you know this science, and they're able to to hide large amounts of information uh, within image and audio files. Um, they're also double protecting their information. They're they're forming cryptography with steganography. They're they're taking the information and they're encrypting it first and then hiding it. So then whoever is receiving the message or someone is you know intercepting it and actually trying to crack um, what is being sent, they have to. Uh, first find it and then once they find it it's not just there they also have to decrypt that information um, some uses of this science would be uh, cyber criminals um, terrorists uh, those are your two main groups that are using this to for harm uh, you know cyber criminals may use steganography practices in order to send messages to one another without being detected by the authorities. They can take their letter and encrypt it and hide it, whatever they want to send. You know, if they're going to perform a crime, um, I've seen episodes of Law and Order where there's a, a business who, what they're doing is selling child pornography and they take what appears to be just a normal picture of a tree in a field and they encrypt and hide these pictures of you know this pornographic material within that picture and without knowing the exact place to click and where to look you would never find it um, also terrorists are using this you know form of science they're uh, implanting terrorist attacks in their letters to get across you know the mail you know, without it anything jumping out looking weird um, they they believe that in the 9-11 attacks that uh, al-qaeda actually used um, some steganography in, in order to get some of their messages across um, so although that some of this has you know been used for bad um, it can also be used as a reliable tool. Companies and business owners that may want to embed a watermark into their work um, that to just you know show a proof of ownership, they would use um, basically steganography with that. There, I know a lot of people that do photography. You know, they don't want people just taking their pictures for free. They'll implant a watermark in their picture just to know that you know that's my picture. Um, I'm going to hit on just the basic formula of steganography. I'm not going to go into it too much. Um, just to show you how it's actually made. Um, what you have is a cover medium. You then add hidden data and then add a stego key, which then provides you with your stego medium, which is your final piece. Uh, cover medium is the file in which you're actually hiding the information. Um, within that cover medium, you're hiding the hidden data, which may also be encrypted using a stego key. So then your result 
in this process would be your stego medium, um, you know, and also your your cover medium, which is your file that you're originally working with, is typically going to be an image or an audio file. Uh, last, we're going to talk about uh, steganalysis, which is the art of detecting and uh, breaking steganography. Um, the easiest way to detect a difference would be to compare the copy that you have with the original document. Um, that's the easiest way to do it, but you know, it's not always going to be the case. Um, uh, one way in doing this is uh, examine color palettes, and this you know applies to a digital um, a digital image, which is what is used most. Um, all Im or most images have a, a unique binary encoding in each individual color, and uh, if the image contains hidden data, many of the colors in the palette will have duplicate binary endings. So if you're examining your color palette and you have a, a lot of duplicates, then it's very possible that there are hidden files within that actual image. Um, but that's about it for steganography. Um, of course, it, it gets way more complex in actually creating one um, more complex than I can even go into. But uh, it, it's a very complex skill. It shouldn't be taken lightly, um, especially as time progresses. I believe that you know criminals who have mastered this already will will have more opportunities uh, with improvement in technology. Uh, I believe they'll be able to perform even greater acts of crime through hiding and you know using secret messaging. Um, authorities and experts of steg analysis also need to start adapting to you know these new technological advances and, and be aware of the threat that this skill can possess um, as well as other cyber crimes. Um, it's something that's never going to decrease in popularity and uh, skill. It's going to get worse. Um, but uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, check back next time for your, our next lesson on forensics.